Hello, my name is Katie Sando and welcome to the Marketing Forum podcast, where I have conversations with lots of different people um, about all things really, leadership, work, careers, inspirational topics, and of course, marketing, communications and creative and what it means to work in those areas. So in today's podcast, I had a conversation with Anya Carlin. Anya Carlin is a wonderful person and she's a food writer and author of three cookbooks, Keep It Vegan, The New Vegan, Cook, Share, Eat Vegan. She also has a pretty hefty social media following and has done loads of different media over the years from things like Radio 4 Women's Hour to stuff like Irish TV. What we had a conversation about was um, particularly focused around the fact that Anya describes her last book as a flop and there's a huge point of inspiration in somebody that's able to talk openly and openly rather and communicate around um, the challenge that's been for her and her career. And it's one of the things I don't think any of us talk about enough. We all think that we're, everybody else has a really smooth ride and they don't. So for us to be able to acknowledge that openly and hear people acknowledging that openly is really positive. I really hope you enjoy this conversation. We talk about a lot of things, Anya's own experience, how she engages with um, the people that uh, follow her, um, the challenge and the opportunity that comes with that, and um, and of course, where she's going next, um, which for her is a current dilemma. I hope you enjoy. One of the first things I'm really interested in talking to you about is how do you actually describe what you do? Because I think that you have got, um, so in some ways I think you could be, uh, I might say to say, oh, you're a bit of an influencer because mm-hmm. you have influence, but that I, I feel like you would probably reject that term. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't describe myself as an influencer, but that's probably, yeah, that's probably just because I have like a general issue with like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't have an issue with influencers, but yeah, I guess I don't want to be classified as one because I don't know if I really get it myself. Mm. I mean, I'm obviously influenced by people um, who definitely are what I would classify as influencers and they have like a huge following and, you know, they have, you know, really interesting lives and things like that. But um, yeah, I mean, I think for the longest time I just wanted to be a writer, you know, because I was working in, you know, magazines and in newspapers and things like that and an intern in that field. Um, and I, yeah, I guess like you want to be taken seriously and things like that. So I just wanted to be recognized as just simply a writer. Um, quite happy to be called a cookbook author, obviously, because that's what I've done, like, you know, write cookbooks and, um, yeah, it is a tricky one. I mean, I've had like so many sort of phases of my life and especially of my career um, and everything sort of feels like it's in flux all of the time. So I'm not sort of, I think that I used to always get really uppity with the blogger thing because it became, I didn't mind obviously being known as a blogger, but when it started to, when people started to perceive bloggers in a certain way, um, I probably rejected that a little bit as well. Not because I'm ashamed of being a blogger, because I was. Um, but when I started blogging, it was just so different, you know. And absolutely nobody was going into it to get themselves a book, uh, you know, a book deal, or um, no one thought they were going to have a career from mm-hmm. it. No, nobody that I knew or followed ever could ever have imagined that this is where we would end up you know it was just a community of people that wanted to share ideas so yeah I think it was kind of like a derogatory term for a while oh, she's a she's a blogger you know <laughs> and you're like I'm a writer god damn it like <laughs> yeah well I don't think because I think at that time you know serious journalism and serious writing mm-hmm. was was clashed with blogging and people didn't realize the power that blogging would end up having. Um, And then it turned into, like you say, these massive, amazing platforms where actually real conversations were being had and real stories were being told. And then that was when almost like more believable news ended up on blogging platforms. 
business um, ended up starting blogs themselves because they realized that they could communicate completely unfiltered with their audience, you know, um, and they ended up having, they were able to go f- completely freelance and maybe like leave their, you know, I, there's people that I follow that were able to leave their full-time jobs and just branch out on their own and, and create something completely different. So yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely changed over the years, but yeah, at the point where people, it was kind of like a laughable term, you know, that was what I was most offended, you know, at the- and the thing is, it's ridiculous because, yes, I absolutely was a blogger and I would not have a career if it wasn't for my blog um, because that's where, um, to kind of cut a long story short, but basically someone at Kyle Books was following my blog or had been reading my blog and it was really on the on the cusp of the whole vegan thing and they obviously could see that, that there was something there and something was about to happen. And so that's actually when she contacted me to say, we're looking for a vegan author or a vegan cookbook writer. And we think that you could be a good fit for us. You know, what do you think? So, um, yeah, if, if it wasn't for my blog, I absolutely would not have a career. So, but yeah, it's funny. You just have this complex kind of, um, relationship with, um, yeah, your, your past, I guess. and, Mm -hmm. And sort of, where where you've come from and your journey and things like that um yeah and I haven't even written a blog post in in months literally months so um I don't know if that's something I will just like revive again and, and get back into like I would like to but at the moment I just I'm like I don't know if I have anything new to say you know I don't know what what I would even blog about it's so terrible. Um- that's something I'm really interested in talking to you about because I know that um because you the journey that you've had so far so three vegan cookbooks and um so one of the things I'm really interested in chatting to you about is um particularly the last one you've started talking about how it was perceived as a failure Mm -hmm. numerically so in terms of sales um and I suppose I'm interested in um in whether for you there was kind of a sense of um do you find yourself like allocating fault around that stuff like do you feel like that actually you should have had more publicity do you feel like it's because the movement has had evolved like do how do you personally find yourself processing that um yeah I mean obviously I'm the one that said openly and publicly that it was that it I how I phrased it like with the publisher themselves, I said, it's tanked, um, which is of such an American term. And they were kind of like, what do you mean? <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, it's tanked. And yeah, that's, you know, we're talking numbers, we're talking sales. Um, and obviously comparatively to Keep It Vegan and, and the new vegan, even which doesn't sell as well as Keep It Vegan, but it's still like, you know, chirps along, you know, at its own little pace and there is like a sort of niche for it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a mixture of things. Uh, yes, absolutely. The market has changed. There are so many more vegan cookbooks on the market, so many more vegan authors, so many authors who aren't actually vegan, but kind of dip on their toe into the whole plant-based world. Um, which is great, you know, because, you know, there's so many more ideas out there, but it's, it's, it is flooded. Like it's absolutely flooded at the moment. So it's like, what, where do you fit in? You know, I mean, someone, uh, I can't even remember. It was one of the posts that I put up and about, you know, kind of feeling a bit low and not really sure where to go from here. And, um, like, I don't really mean, like, should I just, like, give it all up, you know, and just, you know, retreat into a corner? But someone was like, no, you're, like, the the OG, like, the vegan OG. And I'm just like, really? Like, but, yeah, I mean, I guess I have been around a long time and I've kind of seen the landscape change. And, you know, again, vegans were laughed at, you know, and it was just this, you were the butt of all the jokes and you absolutely weren't taken seriously so much so that like I would never have been invited at the beginning of my um, career as a cookbook author invited to a mainstream festival Um, I was only ever invited to veggie or vegan festivals 
Um, so that has changed, you know. It is, it's mainstream. It's totally mainstream now. Um, yeah, so every, everything kind of has changed. Um, PR-wise, publicity-wise, yeah. I mean, without kind of throwing anyone under the bus, I, I, could, I could see, you know, alarm bells were ringing in my head and I was thinking, yeah, we need, we need to do something quite drastic here because I can see that, you know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fail if we don't do something to kind of shove it under people's noses and be like, hey, new book, you know, and it's, you know, the person that wrote Keep It Vegan. And um, I mean, I could see it coming, put it that way. I could, I could absolutely, and you know, and I was desperately trying to communicate that, I guess. And um, it, it's, it's a tricky one because you're, you're allocated um, a certain amount of time and a certain amount of manpower, you know, for, for a limited period, like let's say three months max, you know, and that's what they, they focus on that book for, uh, you know, as well as a bunch of others for, three months after that you're you're kind of done it's like they're mm. on to the next. I get it it's a business that's they have to do that they haven't just spend this spend all their time you know flogging a dead horse kind of thing and um so you know there's this kind of panic where you're like right I have to get in at the beginning because if you don't you're just kind of like clinging on for for dear life and trying to claw back something um but yeah I mean I guess if I'm being totally honest, I could see it coming a mile off. Um, even so much so, like on on the day of of the publication and on the release, it was just like tumbleweed, like literally, like nothing. It was like, oh hey everyone, I released a book today, and it just felt like nobody was talking about it. Mm-hmm. Part of that was because we had done an exclusive deal with um, like a, a a newspaper and. That wasn't coming out until the weekend. Um, but there were other things that, other ideas, I guess, that I had, um, you know, that were not necessarily related to the book, but just to kind of raise my profile a little bit, like interviews and things like that, um, where you don't have to reveal any of the specifics of the book or reveal any recipes or anything. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I think now you just have to think outside the box. Um, doing podcasts, you know, I was desperate to get on, like, you know, um, different podcasts I think Delicious Mike had like a podcast um, yeah I was just like I was up for anything I was like get me to do anything like I will go to festivals like I mean I'm one of those people I will just boss my ass for you like like I'm in like 110% you know and even if I I mean you know I spent money in PR myself like I I lost money on this you know mm-hmm. so you know, I, I, I invest as much as I possibly could in it to try and make it work. And, um, yeah, it just, it didn't quite, didn't, didn't do as well as we had hoped. Let's put it that way. It's so, um, even with um, lockdown, I saw a post on Instagram the other day where um, it was like the, the lost la- book launches of COVID and it was the cookbooks and it, there was, it was something like 10 of them that had, that were supposed to launch. And, you know, some of them were, um, and, you know, I'm massively into food and cooking. Some of them were um, cookbooks and uh, authors that I really knew and mm-hmm. some of them like didn't have a clue. And it's so, and, and the, the post itself said, you know, the, the agony of working your ass off on a book for, you know, often years to then have it unfortunately happen to launch in the coronavirus pandemic is just, um, but I think that it's what surprised me more than anything was the sheer volume that was supposed to launch in the last like three, in the three months of lockdown. It's um, too much. Too much. And, and you do kind of think, God, you know, does the world really need another cookbook? Um, yeah, no, I think, I mean, yeah, there was just like a, a, a moment. I mean, yeah, I guess like when Keep It Vegan first came out, yeah, there were there were quite a few cookbooks, but nothing like the volume there is now. Um, and, and they're all fantastic. That's the yeah. thing. You know, there's <laughs> they're all really amazing cookbooks the photography is amazing um the design is you know awesome like you're really competing at the highest level um competing for people's attention really because you know people only have a finite amount of money that they're going to spend on a cookbook so they're like do I buy this one do I buy that one so like 
you know, when I put the post up about the cover, um, and, and actually a lot of the responses were, well, I didn't really care about the cover. It was just because I'd owned your previous two, or I just really like your recipes. And it's like, but when you're trying to appeal to people who don't follow you, don't necessarily know who you are, um, something like the cover is crucial. Mm-hmm. Getting that right is on a shelf. They're literally choosing between this one and this one. Um, and what's the deciding factor? Yeah, they might open it up, flick through, and kind of the recipes might appeal. But is there anything like me? I, I love a good cover. I am a sucker for a good cover. Um, and I wanted to look nice on my shelf. And of course. You know, we're all drawn to those things, um, you know, and you can't deny them either. You know, there's no point in sort of saying, oh, well, nobody really cares. And it's like, they do. Mm-hmm. They, they do. Yeah. Care. <laughs> my favorite ever is still um, Polpo. And I interrogated myself the other day. I was like, why is this like my favorite? Why does it remain always my favorite cookbook? And you're right. It's not just the recipes, although I love the recipes. It's also just the way the entire book's put together, the stitching in the book, the photography in the book, the kind of the narrative in the book. And you're totally right. Like, especially if you're into cookery, you're, you don't want to just like flick through for a recipe. It's an experience, the whole thing. Um, no, absolutely. It's, it's it's the feeling you get when you when you leaf through it. Um, I mean, so and again, I've just had so many amazing comments recently. Someone said that they own all three of my books, but they and they themselves read cookbooks like novels, but they yeah. hadn't really done that with mine. But since I've been, I guess, a bit more out there on Instagram, and people kind of can see my personality more. She said she's actually gone back and revisited the books and is viewing them completely differently because she can see my personality more. Um, yeah, so, you know, I think a lot of that is, is, is so important. You know, like with, with a Nigella book, you instantly can can feel her personality. It, like, oozes out of every page. Mm. Um, I mean, those are books that you do sit down. Uh, you know, Nigel Slater, you'll sit down, you read it like a novel um, and you, you're kind of sucked into their little world, um, you know, and, and it's such a solace, like cookery is so, well, it's so personal, but it's so soothing. And, you know, yes, we want recipes that are like, you know, quick and easy and, you know, five ingredients or 30 minutes and less. And, like there's all this kind of like sort of stuff going on at the moment that is, you know, really handy, really relevant and all the rest of it. But, and, and I do use, you know, recipes like that as well myself. But really, I love cookbooks where, you know, you have to take your time with it and, you know, you have to read the intro properly. And, you know, it's all part of it, isn't it? It's all part of the process of, mm. of cooking. Sometimes it's crash bang wallop and, and other times it's, right, let's let's choose what we're, we're making this weekend or... Yeah, they're like um, a physical Instagram feed in a way, aren't they? They're kind of like, uh, like a, it's funny, like people like Nigella, you almost read it in her voice. Yeah, um. yeah totally. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know how many times I'll just like take like one of her, but you know, and people probably think that's weird. Like, oh, she's vegan, why is she reading? And it's like, I read all books and I buy all books. I don't just buy vegan books. That would be ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? But um. And I get inspiration from from everywhere and everything and everybody, you know. Um, so, yeah, I don't restrict myself in that way. Um, if you looked at my, you know, people come to, come to my house and they're just like, they, I think they just assume that it's going to be all vegan or plant cookbooks. And it's just like, no, it's everything, you know. Like, it's just a, celebrating food in general, regardless of, you know, you know, if you're plant-based or or not. What I um so what I think is really interesting with you is the fact that uh, like you say veganism itself um, has turned into uh, super ex- uh, accepted nowadays, yeah. um, and uh, it definitely had. I mean, even if you think when I was growing up, vegetarianism it was like oh, they're vegetarian, yeah. Um, and it, uh, like my mum had um oh, one of those really old cranks. Do you remember cranks in London? They had. She's fabulous. And she's on Instagram and she's got like, um, gosh, her name will come to me, but um, she's not got that many followers on Instagram. And she's like like uploading the most amazing. um, It'll come to me in a second. That's like doing my head. But um, yeah, fabulous. Cranks are amazing. 
But so back then, I remember my mum's book and it was like naff and old fashioned and um, and probably nobody really used it. And I think, you know, that entire journey has come through. But I think what's so interesting with you is that you've you've been doing it for so long. It's not just a fad. It's your lifestyle. It's the way you choose to live. So I wondered if we could like rewind a little bit to the beginning about how you because I know um you know, you've spoken about how you ended up getting into eating vegan. But mm-hmm. what I suppose I'm interested in is, is, is it your exploration of that that inspired you to start the blog? Or, you know, did you have any anticipation of uh, that you wanted to write your cookbooks? Um, okay, so, uh, well, we were living in Chicago. So that's where, and I'm sure like I've told the story many people are like, oh my gosh, the same story about her Chicago like but yeah that I mean I was living in this big foodie town um I mean it, it couldn't be better it's like you know a foodie's paradise um not that I'm a fan of the word foodie but you know what I mean uh but yeah so it was actually the completely wrong time to go vegan because there was just so much to explore and eat and experience um and I'd never consider vegetarianism I didn't even know what veganism was. Um, it was actually when I was in, in Chicago and there were a lot of vegan options and we lived near Whole Foods and every time we would go to Whole Foods, there was always like a, like a crazy vegan option. And I'd be like, what was with the vegan thing, you know? Um, so we started like trying a few of the, the vegan options and I was like, geez, this is actually really good, you know? This is, some of it you couldn't even tell the difference like I remember there was like a hot dog stand in in Whole Foods and they did like um soy dogs and soy shakes um which you know the old me would have been like well like (laughs) give me the real thing but um yeah well I just remember like one Friday we went and just had we were like we're gonna have a soy dog and a soy shake and we really enjoyed it and honestly like I couldn't tell the difference um and that's when we were kind of like, hmm, maybe there's something to this, this vegan thing. And that was like the kind of like gateway into just learning more about it. Um, and then, you know, I'd always say I was, and I'd already started the blog. So like um, the, the blog was like pre-vegan. I think one of my first recipes was like, I think it was like a beef stroganoff or something like that. Uh, and it wasn't even my recipe. It was like, someone else's recipe but it was just like I made a big stroganoff hurrah (laughs) Um, (laughs) I actually think my first uh like I had a restaurant review of like Leon I mean hilarious but um yeah so you know it was it was pretty vegan and then I was trying to get into the vegan thing and experimenting a bit more and actually being like a bit braver in the kitchen myself and kind of trusting myself more um and I think actually once I removed the meat and dairy from the equation I probably did yeah feel braver just to kind of go well I mean what what's the worst that can happen do you know what I mean I'm not going to poison anyone so uh you know let's just give this a go um yeah and I just started documenting it and and I guess people seem to be interested and there weren't that many vegan blogs about and I wasn't I don't even know if I called myself vegan at the time for like quite a while um um I mean the the blog is like over 10 years old I think so it's hard for me to like totally remember but um yeah the response was good let's put it that way the response was I was getting like really positive feedback and I was like oh there's something here and then I read you know Alicia Silverstone like the the kind life and then it was like the kind diet can't remember <laughs> one of the two um and and that was great and that really opened my eyes and you know it just kind of snowballed it just kind of snowballed from there and yeah we kind of just didn't really look back I mean there was I, I remember um we kind of checked in with each other I mean I, I did not think my husband would be on board at all I mean he was like ke- kebab meat man like he would literally just go and want just like the kebab meat like he didn't even want like the pita or anything like just like a box of kebab meat like and I remember this is so shocking um I mean and he laughed a friend who was vegetarian I remember one night after like a drunken night out in my 
husband had his um, box of kebab meat. And I just remember he was chasing my friend, friend around with this like kebab meat. And like my friend just like running away and just like being like, no, no, get away from me like that. Um, and obviously now we look back and, you know, our friend's like, do you remember that? And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty weird. Like that we did that and now we're vegan. But um, I mean, I didn't do it, but, you know, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I was not your typical vegan. As in, I, I just, I don't know, I just, it hadn't even crossed my mind that you could have a life without meat and dairy because I was I was you know I was under my food and I I really yeah it, it's almost like by accident but not by accident mm. I find myself in this situation where I'm like I can't imagine being anything other than vegan so um it's funny yeah. because I um gave up meat for and I'm not massive meat eater particularly mm. but and what I do buy I try and buy you know, super good quality, but, um, it's, I never thought I would really be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And actually then after a while, the actual, it's almost as if you become a bit repulsed by the idea of thinking like, this is really like beefy. (laughs) Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's just funny that you don't think. But we ordered, um, a chippy dinner as we call it the other night. And, um, my husband did the order and they they do like a battered vegan sausage and they do it in a separate um like they do it in separate oil and things like that and do it so there's like a veggie kind of oil pit <laughs> for like all the, the chips and the the veggie sausages and stuff and I don't know what happened but obviously the order got mixed up and obviously it's a it's a battered sausage so you can I couldn't tell and I didn't pay any attention so I just kind of like you know broke it open and I literally just took the first bite and I just I knew instantly um and I was just like this is this is sausage and um of course then we looked at the order and it did say just you know battered sausage and I was just like oh my god obviously like you know spat it out and was just like but it was just that feeling of because I thought I wonder if I would and that's the first time I think that's happened possibly ever where like I've actually just like bit into something and just instantly knew like oh oh my gosh of course my husband is like really apologetic because he was the one that did the order um and it turns out it was actually his fault not the the chippy place so (laughs) I was like I've got to kill you but um yeah you know I just I knew I just knew instantly and yeah I don't know my body was just like no yeah that's so interesting (laughs) but yeah do you think the label vegan is unhelpful now um I mean, not necessarily because, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, are, are plant-based, but they still um, eat things that, that vegans wouldn't necessarily eat, like honey or, you know, the bee pollen and things like that. Um, there's some people who even, you know, say I'm plant-based, but they eat eggs and things, you know. So I think, and also veganism is very much uh, a, a lifestyle. So like, I think you can be plant-based, like eat plant-based and it doesn't necessarily filter through to other aspects of your life. So obviously all my beauty products are, are vegan. They're, they've not been tested in animals and they don't contain any animal products. My clothing, um, you know, I don't wear leather or, or wool and things like that. So I think for me, the term vegan is still helpful, especially when I'm like shopping and things, because you know, for example, Marks and Spencer's have a new uh, range of vegan shoes and they are vegan shoes because they don't use any um, like animal glues and things like that. So um, I think to call them plant-based shoes would be a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, they'd be a bit mushy. But yeah, so no, I think there's absolutely still, you know, a place for, and there, yeah, there are people who are extremely dogmatic about it and um very protective of the term um and I think I mentioned on one of my insta stories that some people have called me a a cupcake vegan because you know I'm because I'm kind of like each each to their own kind of that's my vibe you know I'm not I'm not in in the mindset of telling other people how I think they should be living 
because I know that I would have rejected that immediately if, if anyone had of you know tried to enforce those rules on me um and yeah I mean I remember right back at the beginning of my vegan journey um you know I would kind of wander on to these um forums and things like that where there were all say discussions and it was really intense and especially for you know a, a newbie vegan I thought it was really off-putting um you know, so I'm, I'm a bit more open and welcoming and, and I've just always been like that. And, I, you know, and have a conversation like I, I don't really want to have a debate about it. You know, it, you know, I, I've often been in situations where if someone discovers you're vegan. They want to have a debate with you. Yeah, but do you use this? Or and what about chocolate? What about coffee, though? Like, you know, and, and there's there's so many little, um, you know, rabbit holes that you can go down and uh you know, I'm not perfect. That's the thing. You know, it's it's for me. It's not about being perfect. Um, it's just doing the best that you can do. You know, given given your circumstances and and especially at the moment, like everyone's struggling. You know, yeah. Just do what you can do. That's you know my mantra. Yeah, and I think that's so much better. I, it never ceases to amaze me how brutal people are online. Yeah. And like the, some of the stuff that people think it's appropriate to say and, you know, it just blows my mind. Yeah, no, people, I mean, I've, I've not really had any major backlash online. I did, um, I did a program, it was a dispatches program last year, at the beginning of last year. And um, it was called, I didn't know at the time what it was called. It was just like, oh, we're doing this like vegan documentary and we'd love to have your voice and da, 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 whatever it was. I was like, yeah, sure. Come to London, go to a vegan cafe. And as soon as the questions started coming and, and they kind of gave me a bit more context, I was like, oh man, it's like, what have I got myself into here? <laughs> and it was in a cafe, obviously full of vegans, and they were all like earwigging to, you know, hear what I was like, what my response was. And it was about um, people going into this man's um, pig farm, and I don't know if they'd like threatened him and his family and um, all of this kind of stuff. And that was the kind of general gist. Of, and of course, I just came across like, like a cupcake vegan, you know, because I, you know, I thought, well, I think threatening anyone or anyone's children or, or making anyone feel like they're, um, you know, or, you know, I don't know if he was in fear of his, you know, in fear of his life, but obviously, um, the thing is I wasn't familiar with the story and that was obviously, it kind of put me on the back foot a little bit. Cause I was like, I literally have no idea what they're talking about because I've never heard of this person I don't know really about this story but all I can say is it's not an approach I would take you know and wow yeah I definitely got um a little bit of the trolling on on Twitter and I just thought nah not for me that's you know I just I don't want to be controversial um you know it's not that I don't have an opinion on these things I mean obviously I did have an opinion and my opinion was too wishy-washy for some people or yeah what you know it obviously rubbed some people up the wrong way and yeah it's it's not nice to be on the you know the receiving end of that like I actually felt like physically sick I remember feeling physically sick at the time it was just after I think they aired it on New Year's Day or New Year's Eve or something might have been New Year's Eve actually and I just remember having like a really horrible evening um and I'd been writing a few articles for The Guardian as well, like about, it was um, like your Google questions answered and it was um, like, why, why do vegans not eat honey and, you know, um, faux me? And it was all those kind of very touchy subjects for people. Um, I think even the one about vegan fashion and, and I got a little bit of trolling from that as well. The honey one follows me around like nobody's business. It's just like a thing that kind of rears its head from time to time. Um, and it's not that I regret like doing those things, but yeah, I, it just makes me realize that I'm just not built for it. I'm just not built for, it's not the criticism I have an issue with, but it's that kind of faceless trolling, you know, where people, it does get to you, you know, I, I guess like you have to be, you know, quite, quite strong to deal with that kind of backlash and no, thanks. No. no. <laughs> I just, 
I mean, it doesn't matter, I think, how much people can be like logical or rational around, you know, why people are doing it and that, you know, just ignore it. it if you like that kind of stuff, it just, it, it, like you say, it, it's very hard to manage. Um, I, th- I just, yeah. Um, so the other thing I really wanted to chat to you about was, um, I think you said the other day on your Instagram and we were having a bit of a conversation about the fact that, um, you kind of were talking about the fact that you're a bit personally like at a crossroads Mm -hmm. and, um, I massively picked up on this because I think that it's, um, it's something that so many people can relate to. I think particularly women can relate to it. Because if you have, um, for whatever reason, had career breaks, whether or not that's for parenthood or whatever, um, and also just this whole kind of um, this whole kind of sense of like a career journey, like how should it, what should it look like? You know, we're completely bamboozled by people having their amazing journeys publicly, and and you just kind of think like, oh god, you know, is, should I have said yes to that opportunity or whatever? And so I just think it's really, it's really refreshing to hear you openly talk about the fact that you're at a bit of a point where you're like, oh, you know, yeah. what, what next for me and what feels right? And so how did you, um, how, have you had been thinking about this quite, for quite a while or did it just kind of come across to you and you just got a thought like, God, I don't know what's next? Yeah, no, I would say quite a while. I think a lot of people misunderstood some of those posts and, and thought that it was just due to the lockdown that all of these like thoughts and feelings had come to the fore. Um, but really, you know, this has been like brewing for well over a year, like basically since the, the last book was released, which was in 2018, um, you know, and since then it's been, it's been quite difficult, I guess. Um, because I, w- I kind of felt like I was on this trajectory and everything kind of felt like it was reasonably secure. Um, and I didn't, I guess, probably naively, I didn't sort of question any of it. And I didn't kind of think, oh, this could just come to a really abrupt end. And then what, you know? Um, and because you know, when things are going well and you're kind of being bolstered by people, um, yeah, you do feel, you feel quite secure in what you do and quite secure in yourself and quite confident. And, um, and when all that kind of grinds to a rather abrupt halt and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, people are disappearing into the shadows and you're kind of like, okay, what now, (laughs) you know, and you're kind of, you know, asking for help. Like I was constantly going, okay, what, what, you know, what can we do? Like, you know, how can we improve the situation? Like I need, um, like I'm never one that, that has been afraid to to ask for help, you know, like I don't know about everything and, um, I don't have the answers or the solutions to everything. Um, so yeah, it was, it's been, yeah, it's just been really, it's been really difficult. I mean, there's been other things happening in my personal life that have been a really welcome distraction. So there have been like points where I have been able to kind of just shelve it and be like, right, that's not important right now because, you know, I've got this to focus on. Um, but it just keeps obviously, you know, because I'm the kind of person that I, I have to be doing something creative, you know, like I've always, like I, I was a musician basically and I I studied music Um, and then I I went to drama school and I was an actor and then, you know, I've worked sort of in the the fashion industry and so I've, I've always had this creative outlet and I always felt like it was leading somewhere, even though the cookbooks were kind of accidental, but also not because, you know, I, I obviously was putting my heart and soul into the blog um, and it was like good practice, I thought at the time, for what I was doing, which was interning at uh, newspapers and magazines. And I thought, well, what better place to flex your writing muscles than on your personal blog? Um, and obviously the food, you know, was m- huge in my personal life, never thinking that I, c- I could make a career out of it. Um, and then when it did, it was just like, it opened up this whole new world to me and I just felt like I finally found what I'm 
I'm good at and what really makes me happy and what really satisfies me. Um, so yeah, when it, when it all starts to kind of crumble a little bit, um, it's really frightening. Like it's really, it, yeah, it's really frightening. And I've kind of spent, you know, a long time trying different things and, and, and hoping that's going to be, you know, the, the silver bullet that's going to, you know, make everything right again. And, and, I've absolutely said yes to everything, every opportunity. I mean, oh gosh, there's just like so many thing examples that I could use. But you know, I live in Cornwall, obviously. <laughs> in Cornwall too. But um, you know, I will get on a train and I will go to London with my suitcase full of um, equipment and you know ingredients, and and I will go and do that festival in the pissing rain. Um, with no travel expenses um I'll be out of pocket I'll be an absolute bedraggled mess by the time I get back you know depends on um and I'll do it just for that little bit of exposure just to kind of go hey I'm still here hey guys like (laughs) uh don't forget me (laughs) but yeah so I don't think I could have done any more you know myself um without you know completely leaving myself like penniless like I could have poured probably more and more money into like you know doing PR or going here or going there or just you know but at the end of the day you have to you have to draw a line under it some somehow um so now I'm kind of yeah now I'm at a crossroads and I'm like also my confidence it has been eroded quite badly I would guess over the last year and a half two years um yeah and I've I've had some like really low points and I if you say that I'm like very absent from Instagram or something like I probably am going through a really low patch it's not that I and it's because I don't want to put out that kind of energy it's like I feel like I've now kind of found a way of showing everyone that it's not all rainbows and unicorns as I call it and you know it's it is tricky it is difficult I'm trying to navigate it the best way that I can but I also don't want to drag people down into my little kind of you know that's not what Instagram is really a boy I think a good balance of it I think yeah you can have a post like that and then just purely a food post just to be like by the way I'm still cooking like even though all of this is going on, I still have to feed myself. Um, and I'm still obviously loving creating recipes. I have been working on proposals. Um, yeah. And, and, and just figuring out, you know, where is there a gap in the market that I can comfortably fill without feeling like, you know, like I, I can't sort of just jump on something like a bandwagon or it has to, it has to be its own thing um, for me to feel fulfilled as well, you know? Um, and it's, it's difficult. Like it's not, there's no easy fix. Like there's no easy fix and it is a business, you know, publishing is a business and they want to know that they're going to sell books. Um, and I feel like I can write, good books that do sell um and I've kind of figured out maybe what doesn't work so much now so it's like I'm trying to sort of see it as a positive it's like okay that didn't work why didn't it work Mm. um what can I do better next time so you, you carry it with you I mean I guess if you just had a string of successes um then you're not going to learn from that, are you? But, you know, you have to kind of go through those those low points in order to come out the other side. And I, and I kind of feel like there is sort of light at the end of the tunnel at the moment. Um, and I do have so many ideas and I'm so, I'm like chomping at the bit, you know, to get my teeth stuck into another book. And it's just whether someone will give me that opportunity, um, which I, ho- I hope they will. <laughs> Yeah, it's so because what's I think what's really interesting with what you say is the fact that you know all of this kind of stuff tied into like lost confidence as well, and I definitely think there's um, you know I think it's not just women; it's humans in general. A lot of us tie what we do into um, probably self esteem, mm-hmm. and so therefore, if you then hit a point, whether or not that's through 
like you say, things where there's like challenges or whether or not, you know, for, for some people at the moment, they're going to be losing their jobs. And, you know, it's, um, you know, how, how do you kind of um, pick yourself up on a day-to-day basis? It's, you know, I can imagine that it is really hard. Yeah. Um, and, when, and when you're self-employed as well, I think, you know, there's no one, there's no boss there to say, um, good job, like that you did that really well. Or, and I, and I didn't realize how much I thrived on that. Um, you know, and I, that is definitely one of the pitfalls of, of working. There's so many, you know, pluses um, to kind of being like a master of your own destiny and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I do love working in a team. I, you know, the bit that I love about creating a book the most is when we're uh, getting to shoot it because you're you're in a team and you're you're working together on it. And you know, there's you're bouncing ideas off people, and and that's when all the goodness happens. You know, and I, I really miss that when I'm working like by myself. And yeah, I just sometimes you just need to be told as well. You know you're doing okay, you know, you're, you're not terrible at this or, and I don't know, I think maybe like authors do need bolstering because there's just so, it is like acting, there's so many points where you're not really doing anything or, you know, or working on something specifically. So, you know, you, you maybe do need your agent to say, okay, by the way, don't feel so bad about this because, you know, A, B or C and it's, um, but you know it's you can't expect you know everyone to kind of be just like fawning over you and telling you how you are and and it's not it's not that I necessarily want that but yeah sometimes you just want reassurance that um you know you you may feel like everything is like falling apart but um you know you got this you've got this like um you know we'll we'll figure it out like you know things aren't going to plan at the moment but you know we'll we'll figure out a plan and we'll yeah, it's it's tricky. I mean, obviously, I've got my husband who's constantly going, you know, you're great, and it's like, yeah, you're my husband. Like, obviously, you're going to say that, but <laughs> you know, you just you need someone external to kind of not validate you, but um, or or may- maybe maybe that's why we go on Instagram to to have you know people say positive things about you and 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 yeah, validate you and and make you feel like you're worthwhile and I think it is validate in a way isn't it because especially if you're doing something that's creative and you're a creative person yeah there's a huge amount of that which is created for yourself but then there's also a huge amount of it where you are looking for your you it's for an audience of some sort mm-hmm. whether or not that's a cookery book and you want people to cook from it or whether or not that's like a social media post where um you know you you're, you're seeking a certain number of likes or comments mm-hmm. or whatever it may be um, yeah, I, I mean, haven't they stopped? Because I, I was looking at my um, my sister showed me an Instagram post when she was over, and it was someone that she follows, and there were no likes on it. Like, as in the likes were hidden. And I think aren't certain countries doing that now? They've like, and yeah, bring it on! I, I all of that like stuff. I mean, I think we get so hung up on numbers. Like, I, I follow um, a writer called Alicia Kennedy, who's amazing, and. She's like, you know, she was talking about like, you know, will I ever get to 10K on Instagram or, and then someone replied and said, actually, once you even get to 10K, it just kind of plateaus now. Like there's no, like no, everyone seems to get to a certain number or they aim for a certain number. Um, and then it just kind of like flatlines a little bit and you you, do, you don't kind of get any more, you don't get like an, in, unless like someone huge like shares what you do and then you might get like an influx of followers that way. Um, but also are they the right people? Are they following you for the right reasons? Whereas I think I'd rather have a smaller audience, a core audience that really gets me, really enjoys like my content. Um, you know, I, I think that that is maybe healthier and better than than having you know, 200,000 followers and, and they're just kind of following you because a ton of other people are following you. You know, it's, 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 I I don't know. I feel like Instagram has entered like a whole other realm of, um, I don't even know if they know what they are about anymore. Um, and all the algorithm stuff and like there's people that I follow. I actually did like, 
I don't want to call it like a cull, but like, I mean, it was actually the people that I unfollowed weren't actual people. It was more like brands, if you know what I mean. Like, so I followed, I realized I was following like, honestly, like 200 brands or something ridiculous. And it's not that I don't like those brands, but it's like, well, I, I know them. And if I want to get something from that brand, I know I can just go on their website. I don't necessarily need to be following them on Instagram. It's just kind of clogging up my feed. Um, I want to, you know, get in back into the community and, and sort of, you know, feed off real people r- rather than, you know, yeah, just like a, like a brand that's obviously trying to get you to buy something. Um, so yeah, I unfollowed, gosh, it must've been like 200 plus like brands. And all of a sudden, like my feed looked completely different. I was seeing people I hadn't seen in months, if not years, like seriously, that I'd kind of forgotten about. And then I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, there they are, you know? <laughs> and then you leave a message, how you doing? <laughs> but um, yeah, so... Mm-hmm. Gosh, it's just exploded, hasn't it? And I don't know. I think something else is bound to come along that we all gravitate towards because it feels more personal. Um, whereas, like, I think Instagram doesn't feel as personal as it once did. Um, although in saying that, I am loving Instagram stories at the moment. So, <laughs> And the, the IGTV. So, like, Insta stories and IGTV, that's what I generally don't really scroll 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 anymore I'm just like you know what because I like to see people in reality as well um you know talking and moving and (laughs) not just you know I definitely think it's going to move back towards being well back to that community sense and I did exactly the same as you the other day um I was inspired by a friend who just said I'm literally back down to 50 people that I follow now and Mm -hmm. I've always been because I love like being inspired seeing what people are Mm -hmm. doing and I think I had like 1200 people that I was following and um you it's exactly the same as you like I realized that loads of them were brands that either I didn't need to follow or actually their content didn't resonate with me at all Mm -hmm. um but they definitely sort their algorithm out because you're totally right. Like you actually don't see the content that you want to see. No, not at all. And then of course, like once you start engaging with that content again or that person again, then you see their posts more. Um, But honestly, I just preferred it when it was like the most recent upload. Like, yeah, exactly. Keep it simple. Like, I mean, I get it. They're trying to make money. It's, (laughs) but at the same time, you're kind of, destroying what you created you know mm. and I think it has to reach a point where they they, ha- they they have to address some of those core issues because it's just not pleasurable it's just mm. not pleasurable I mean I spend way more time on YouTube now um you know I love like vlogs and um who am I following at the moment I'm loving I wish you would upload more Louise Rowe I just like love it. her life is just like like dream life you know her uh English country home um and yeah obviously you know her work is glamorous anyway but yeah you kind of just I don't know it's just nice being being able to escape into someone else's world for a little bit um but yeah so tell me where you are now then do you know what's next for you are you still exploring um have you got kind of like a battle plan for some kind of major creative brainstorm I mean, yeah, like I've so, like I said, I, I have, you know, a couple of proposals that I'm working on um, as well as sort of some ideas that I, I've been kind of asking around, like, should I explore this more? You know, I'm very much at the stage where I'm like, um, you could, you could pitch, you know, a thousand, you know, things to people. But if that's not what they need at that particular moment, they're going to say no, essentially, because, you know, they, they might already have a, you know, I'm talking specifically about like publishers, they might already have it in their catalogue or something quite similar, um, or it's too niche. Um, you know, so m- my, I'm kind of like writer for hire, essentially. So I'm like, I can write you, I can write you anything. Like, what do you need? Like, that's kind of, kind of my approach. And it's not to say that I don't, ha- and I'll obviously, I, I, I'll, i you know, present like a number of ideas and be like, this is what I think could work. 
maybe we can kind of combine what you need with what I think might work and, and create something really cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I think just because, like, the market is so, um, you know, it's kind of bursting at the seams a little bit at the moment. And there's, there's like, I can't remember, someone gave me the figure of, like, how many vegan cookbooks are due to come out between now and Christmas, and it's Ooh. a lot. So, yeah, it's like, also, and you're trying to predict the trends for, like, two years' time because it takes so long to, like, write a book that, yeah, something that is trending now might not be trending in two or three years' time. So you'll kind of have missed the mark again. So you're always trying to, yeah, predict what sort of the trend in, you know, two, three years is going to be. Um, you know, and the good thing about, like, Keep It Vegan is it's kind of like a staple book, Um and that's why it's, it, I mean, it's basically like my bread and butter because um, it never seems to go wide of style. You know, it, it's it's just got those core recipes that a, a lot of people need. And there's there's more and more people wanting to try veganism or, you know, plant-based um, sort of cooking. So, you know, it's always going to find a place. Um, yeah, so it's trying to find a book that's like that that will become a core book but isn't that <laughs> so do you, you know when you start doing because I was thinking about this the other day that when sometimes you then start creating stuff around an audience does it lose the joy for you a little bit though or do you still get excited about it yeah I mean it, it, there has to be a bit of balance like I think if you just go you know, off down your own road, well, this is what I want to create because this reflects me 100%. Um, I mean, depending on who you are, that might, that might totally work. Um, but no, I, th- I think you have to kind of give back to your audience as well, which is why I'm always asking, you know, what would you like to see or what would you like to see more of in, in the, co- the next cookbook? Um, and I, I think it is important to use that feedback um, because those are the people buying the books and, and using the recipes, you know, mm. so it would be silly not to listen to that. Um, it doesn't mean it dictates the entire book or how you write it or, but, you know, it kind of helps shape it a little bit. Um, so yeah, I definitely, I do listen to people um, and I want to give people what they need and what's useful, you know, in, the, in their day-to-day lives. And I realize that people can't, um, spend you know two hours in the kitchen um and they don't want you know uh, an ingredient less the length of your arm so with a bunch of <laughs> although when someone um i read a review recently that someone had written of um cook sure eat and it, it described it as being quite like health food shop-esque and i was just like because i used a gave in a couple of recipes which i just thought was hilarious and i was like i mean you can get a gave anywhere these days you know health food store to get it um and they were like oh I'm, I'm happy to use like sugar and it's like yeah you but you can use sugar that's totally cool like just um forego the agave if you mm. would rather uh, you know but it's yeah you're never going to basically what I'm trying to say is you're never going to keep everyone happy there's always going to be criticism or there's too much of this or there's too little of that or it's too lengthy or it's not lengthy enough or it's too simple or it's you know yeah I, I've, I've had it all I've literally you know and so you you have to straight stay true to yourself um but also yeah absolutely listen to to the feedback and and try and maybe yeah just amend some of the you know wouldn't say they're like issues but just try and rein yourself in and you know I mean there are like recipes in certain books that I think should I have put that in or you know maybe there was a, there was another you know you're always like torn between putting in something that you think is quite interesting um but yeah with a, you know a different sort of you know mindset um it, how many people are going to make that and how often are they going to make that you know what I mean and I think in any given book you can there's only a handful of recipes that you can really throw in that are huge curveballs you know I think you know because that that's how we yeah we want to be excited and we want to be challenged not too challenged and not too often <laughs> when it comes to food because food is comfort you know mm-hmm. and 
Um, so that's what I've learned anyway. So it's it's kind of like, yeah, that's how I generally shake my my books and my recipes and yeah. Do you get tempted to do something completely different now? And do you like a like a cafe or a Netflix documentary? Um, I've definitely looked into the cafe thing. Um, and we've kind of sat down and, and tried to work out a sort of business plan for it. Um, there's actually a space in Penzance that I have my eye on and I actually have my eye on it for a number of years. And there's been a couple of um, ventures that have gone in there that, that have actually done quite well. Um, um, but I, I, we just couldn't really, because the way that I'd want to do it, um, you would just need too much investment or upfront capital in order to make it work. Like I'm not, I just couldn't go in and just kind of, hey, set up shop and it'd just be a little bit of a, um, I don't know, like, oh, I'll just borrow some furniture and just like throw it. Like I, I would want to like totally revamp the place make it like a cool spot for people to come um you know and I know what what I want to eat that's missing certainly from the area mm. because we we even though that there are like quite a few good options we still struggle with certain things um like brunch and lunch you know but that kind of like laid back almost LA vibe uh you know somewhere where you can go and hang out and have a coffee and you know some waffles or you know like that is definitely that could work that could absolutely work down here but um yeah unfortunately you need you need money to do these things yeah and it's such I mean and it is you know it's such a challenging market you know I was thinking in my head you know you think about like deliciously Ella where she turned it Mm -hmm. from like a blog and an app and then Mm -hmm. the cafe and then she does like now she's got stuff in it they're in like Starbucks and Tesco's or whatever it is and um but she's in London and you know it's a lot easier I think to know that you're going to have a big market when you're opening any kind of venture you know and it probably has the right connections as well which obviously um you know, which I think is important. And I mean, certainly when I was an actor, um, that was really important, you know, you know, there were people getting jobs, you know, because, you know, they, they, they knew the right people. And, and that's, we can kind of, um, and, and actually even in the fashion industry, you know, it, it really is, um, it's crucial. It's crucial to, to make, make those connections and then that that way you can kind of you know build your brand um it is more difficult obviously when you're down in Cornwall um but it's also difficult when you're just kind of like a single person like self-employed kind of just putting along and yeah you know, when you've got a team around you doing like you whatever got, yeah it's I mean, obviously, I don't know if I'd necessarily, I don't know if I could handle having such a big brand. Like, I I don't, I think that's a lot of pressure, Um, you know, and it's not that I'm averse to, like, pressure or difficult situations, but, um, like, that that would would be a huge undertaking. Like, I don't, I don't envy anyone that has, I mean, you know, that's a lot of people you're employing. There's a lot of, like, you know, sort of, you know, wheels turning and, you know, that, you know, it's, it's a lot to, you know, keep, um, keep control over. And no, I mean, a, a cafe, that's one thing, but like a huge, like global, well, you know, national brand. It's like, yeah, I'll, I'll take the little cafe, but with like a little bit of like support. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, t- I mean, I totally agree with you. You've got to know what, it, what's right for you, don't you? And you've got to know that, um yeah, massive brands come with as much negativity as they do positivity so yeah it's you know and fair play like you know like hats off like totally um but yeah I think like I said I'm, pro- I'm probably just not like built built for that you know I just couldn't probably couldn't handle it like I'm um, the thing is I always say like I'm not really asking for much like I just want to live my sort of quite simple life continue to do what I'm doing obviously I work hard and I and I 
put in, you know, the hours and the effort and all the rest of it. Um, but it's not because I want the end result to be, you know, something grandiose or anything like that. It's, you know, I just want to live comfortably and, yeah, have a, you know, a sort of creatively fulfilled but quite quiet existence. <laughs> like, I mean, I, well, I've, I wouldn't be living in Cornwall if I wanted to be you know, partying every night, let's put it that way, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm content, I'm very content but it's how, how can you maintain that? And at the moment, that's what I'm struggling with. It's like, it, I have to do something drastic in order to even maintain what I've currently got, if that makes sense. So it's not even like, you know, I'm, I'm expecting something like huge to, to come out of, you know, the, the next um, book deal or something like that. But I think, yeah, I just want to keep, you know, keep everything, you know, on that kind of level of I'm I'm comfortable I'm comfortable <laughs> no I totally know what you mean um I'm very aware I don't want to take up too much of your time so I've been an, I've taken an hour of your life that you're not getting back now um, no. <laughs> but um thank you so much for joining us and um having a chat because like I say I do really think that you know that it's super refreshing your honesty around it and that you know, careers are a long time. That's what I really like. It's a really important message for me. And I don't know why I've just kind of latched onto it about this fact that life is long and careers take a long time to build and they ebb and they flow. And there's going to be years where everything's going like unbelievably swimmingly and there's mm -hmm. going to be years when they're not. So it's been so great to have a chat with you about your experience and um, hear from you about where you are and hopefully, yeah. you know, encourage other people to realize, you know, the same thing that, life isn't There's falling steps, apart but, yeah I, I, everyone always like says or you know quotes the thing about Nora Ephron well, she didn't direct her first film until she was 50 or something it's like yeah but she was working her ass off for decades like that yeah she directed her first film at 50 or whatever but you know that was like decades of work that went into that like it didn't just happen she didn't just like wake up at 15 and go I'm going to direct a movie you know and, and then obviously she had a whole other like you know career but um yeah, I guess like you have to lay, you have to lay the groundwork um, and, and hope that, you know, it's enough so that you can just continue doing what you love to do. And that and really that that's, um, I don't know if I've fully articulated sort of myself or, or what I actually mean, but really I just want to be able to continue doing what I'm doing. Um, yes, I want fresh challenges and things like that. Um but yeah, I just, I love what I do and I, I just want to be able to, you know, keep going with it. Um, it's very, very simple. I'm not asking much, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have absolute faith in you. And I also think, you know, you have got a really strong fan base. And I think that you are in a really interesting point in that you are not somebody who's just kind of woken up three years ago and thought like, you know, I'm not going to eat meat. You know, you've been doing this for years. You, you, it's a, it's, it's your life, and, um, and you. There's stories to tell around that, isn't there? So, you know, yeah. I absolutely, I can't wait to see what you do next because I do think it's going to be great. Thanks, thanks, appreciate it, appreciate the. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoyed that podcast with Anya Carlin. I hope you agree that it's so inspirational to hear from somebody talking so openly and honestly, honestly about what are challenges that so many of us face so stay tuned because next week you have another podcast coming your way amy shakespeare is an innovation manager and she is the founder of a project called you better work and she's studying for a phd at the moment she is a very busy lady we chatted about innovation and um innovative tech basically uh how it's used to engage audiences the different ways it's used, what how it can be used by us as marketers and creatives, and some of the negatives about it as well. It's a really interesting conversation, and it's one that um, hopefully uh, there'll be bits of it that you might think I might put that into practice. So keep an eye out, stay tuned, and in the meantime, follow the Marketing Forum on social media, and if you're not subscribed, you really should subscribe to the database because you get very cool emails from me.